Hi everyone, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be unpacking my backpack after four months of travelling. So if you guys haven't been following, I have been backpacking around Southeast Asia for four months. I went to Thailand, Vietnam, Bali, Malaysia and Singapore and I got back about two weeks ago. It feels like forever. Like if I sit and think about the places that I've seen and the experiences that I've had and then I look at where I am now in Manchester on the other side of the world, it doesn't feel real. It feels like a different world altogether. Like travelling feels like this weird fever dream. So if you guys do want to follow along with the trip, I've got all the videos in one playlist, I'll link it below. And then you can also check out my Instagram and my TikTok. I've got a travel Instagram. I did make a pack with my video just before I left to go travelling. So if you've not seen that and you would like to see what I packed, how I packed, everything pre-trip, then I'll link that video in the description box. But today I'm going to be unpacking my backpack and I've seen a lot of these videos going around recently and I think they're really, really helpful in terms of helping you plan and prepare for a trip because obviously now... I've done it for four months. I know a lot more than I did before that. So I'm going to be showing you guys everything that I brought home with me, telling you a bit about the backpack and whether or not I recommend it. Also going to tell you things that I took which I wish I didn't take, things that I didn't take which I wish I did take and everything like that. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So just to remind you, this is my backpack. It is empty right now, which is the only reason that I can lift it like this because, oh my God, it was so heavy when it was full. I'm so happy with it, you know, that it survived four months. I mean, it's not as new. It's a bit dirty, but other than that, it's not broken or anything. It's completely fine. So this backpack is the Euro Hike Nepal 65 and I got it from Go Outdoors. I think 65 litres is an ideal size for a trip like four months backpacking. I definitely, definitely think you can do it with less and my next backpacking trip, I'm actually taking a backpack that is a lot smaller, but they do also do bigger sizes. I saw a few people with 80, 85 litre backpacks and they regretted it so much. I mean, me with my 65 litre one, I was thinking like, I wish I had a smaller one. I wish I didn't bring so much stuff. I definitely, definitely overpacked, which I'll get into in a second, but showing you some of the main features of this backpack so it has obviously the main big compartment which is here it has a separate zip pocket compartment at the bottom and then it has two side pockets as well one here and one here it does have proper back support on it and it's also got the waist strap as well which is really really important for when you are backpacking because the waist strap helps to take a lot of the weight off your back and your shoulders so you don't damage your back when you are carrying a backpack of that size. So I took with me three packing cubes and I said this in my pack with me video but packing cubes are an absolute lifesaver if you are going backpacking. Not going to go on about how great they are because I know absolutely everyone mentions it in travel videos but that's because it is completely true. So the first one that I took, this one was like the smallest one. I'm so sorry if you can hear any background noise. I actually don't know what's going on outside. Sounds like they're mowing the grass but like the grass is frozen so why would they be doing that? Then I've got this one which was like my medium size packing cube and then my third and final one was my biggest packing cube. And not as packed as they were when I came back because I've been back two weeks and they've just been sat on my bedroom floor because I refuse to unpack them. <laughs> they're looking a bit messed up but this is my biggest packing cube. So this one and the medium size one are kept in the main compartment of the backpack and then this smaller one I actually fit into the bottom pocket and then also in the bottom pocket with this packing cube I kept my second pair of trainers. So the only shoes that I took with me were two pairs of trainers. These are the first ones. These are my Adidas 
Oswego, I think it's called. These are my all-time favourite trainers, literally comfiest shoes that I own. Obviously, they're not really very travel-friendly because they're more like fashion trainers, but they are so, so comfortable and I try to keep good care of them. And then my second pair of trainers that I took, I actually left in one of the countries in Asia. I think I left it in Thailand at the very end. They were just another pair of Adidas trainers but they were a little bit older and a bit more worn out so I wore them when I was doing like any activity kind of stuff where they might get dirty or muddy and I didn't want to wear those trainers because those are my favourite. So yeah I had like a nice pair of trainers and then like a pair that I didn't really care if anything happened to them and I did end up leaving them behind but they were the only shoes that I took with me. I did also take a pair pair of flip-flops but again I left them behind because who needs flip-flops in Manchester it's like minus six at the minute so now I'm going to go into the packing cubes and show you guys the actual clothes that I've brought back with me so as I said earlier I massively overpacked and when I was packing I actually took out a lot of stuff that I wanted to take so I thought I did really well but then when I got there I quickly realized that I had way too many clothes with me did not need that many outfits half of the stuff I did not even wear so I've ended up bringing back only some of my stuff I left quite a big pile of clothes in I think I left it in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia I just left it in my hotel room for someone to claim and take also the thing with southeast asia is that it is so so cheap so if you wanted to you could just show up and buy everything when you get there so with that in mind let's get into what i actually brought back with me so in this small packing cube i've pretty much just got bikinis and underwear i've got two caps in here i've got a black one and a white one to be honest don't need two of them but i would recommend taking one really helpful for when it's hot which it always is in southeast asia and the sun is intense like the uv levels are so so high i had my forehead burn so many times because I wasn't wearing a cap. Bikinis. So in Southeast Asia you probably are just going to live in bikinis a lot of the time so it makes sense to take a lot of them but try not to because you definitely can just rewear the ones that you already have and also it is so cheap that you can just buy more if you want to. I think I ended up taking about six or seven bikinis with me and I've come back with I think I've come back with three. So the first one that I've come back with is my yellow one which you might have seen quite a bit on my instagram this is one of my favorites second one i brought back was this one purple one and then the third one that i brought back with me is this one just because i actually really like these bikinis so i didn't want to leave them behind because i know that i'll wear them again on my next trip also in this packing cube i've just got my socks and underwear so in terms of underwear i took probably i would say about seven or eight pairs of bottoms i took three bras i had a white one a black one and a strapless one i'd say that's all you need you don't need any more than that i took probably about seven pairs of socks and that amount was completely fine to be honest you could probably take less but then you just have to do your washing a bit more often now going into my medium sized packing cube which has got a lot of my clothes in here so let's see what I actually brought back with me. So first things first a few bits that I picked up along the way. I came back with of course a pair of elephant pants and a pair of elephant shorts because did you even backpack Thailand if you didn't come back with these. Then I think I've got three pairs of shorts. So the first pair these were actually a really really last minute purchase. I got them like the day before I went traveling from H&M because I realized I didn't have any denim shorts. I'm sorry they've got a mark on them. I've not washed them yet but they're just these like 90s style denim shorts. With denim obviously it is quite thick so it does take up space in your backpack and it's not the lightest material either so you could definitely do without a pair of denim shorts but I personally love wearing them I think they're so comfortable and they're a little bit more stylish as well if you want to have like a nicer outfit so these are one of my absolute favorite things I took with me second pair of shorts I wore these ones probably equally as much they are these nude shorts from Cupshe and I love them one because they've got pockets in which is really practical two because they are super super lightweight material which is perfect 
perfect for the climate of Southeast Asia. Three, because of the colour, they go with so many different outfits. So anything like this is perfect, it packs up really easily, super lightweight. The third pair of shorts, to be honest, I didn't need these. I probably only wore them, I'd say about three times in four months, but these white shorts, these are from Primark. I think I thought because they're white, they'll make some nice outfits, but I just didn't end up wearing them that often. Got this little white top from H&M. It's so creased up, but this is basically a little bit of a blouse. And what I like to do with this was wear it over my bikinis so i'd have like a bikini underneath but then i could put this on to cover my shoulders or my back and it makes a really nice outfit with the denim shorts as well next we've got this little crop top this is from zara these vest tops are just essential for southeast asia this is literally the kind of thing that i was wearing day to day so i had this white one from zara i've got a black one from zara don't know where it is actually but i wore them a ton of the time anything like that is perfect for southeast asia or any kind of similar climate got this one as well from h&m i wore this quite a lot again because it's really lightweight i had this little vest top this is from primark a bit more colorful um it's got like an open back as well so a little bit fancier but exactly the same it's a completely thin material so it was perfect for that kind of weather i also had this blue one from bershka which i love as well then going into my bigger packing cube which has got the rest of my clothes in so i've got two skirts first one is this white denim skirt again denim is not entirely necessary for that kind of climate but i just think it's nice to have like a nicer outfit from time to time with a skirt like this you can dress it up but also dress it down so i really liked having this one with me but i also had this tennis skirt which is from primark again it's white so it went with a lot of different tops and then the third skirt i had this one from primark i got a lot of compliments on this it was on my instagram as well really lightweight so it packs up very easily easily i didn't wear it as often as the other stuff because you can only wear it with certain things whereas if you take more staple pieces like a plain white skirt or plain denim short you can wear them with a ton of different outfits next one i wore this so many times it is this little play suit pretty sure it's from rebellious it was gifted to me but it's so so good because it's a really really lightweight material another little staple piece i had this white vest top this is from pull and bear no stradivarius next i had a longer skirt i only had one maxi skirt with me and this one is from primark it's just a pink and white floral skirt this was really good for when i went to temples or anywhere that i had to cover my legs also it was quite nice for like evenings or just if i wanted to have more of like a dressy outfit and didn't want to be wearing shorts all the time this little green top from zara i love this but i hardly wore it because it has sleeves they're only little sleeves but they are quite tight and a lot of the time i just felt too hot to wear anything with sleeves i took with me one sarong this is from cup she just a plain white one really good for covering up at the beach also good for covering at the temples and stuff but again if you do forget to take one they sell sarongs over there we are getting towards the end now i promise next i've got this dress i actually bought this while i was there i bought it from a shopping mall in bali it's from pull and bear it's just like a khaki green ribbed dress the reason i bought this is because i was walking around the shopping center in bali and i was feeling a little bit sad about seeing all the clothes and stuff because normally when i'm not traveling i love my fashion i love buying new clothes i love having different outfits i think i just felt a bit sorry for myself that day so i was like i'm gonna buy this dress just to have like one nice outfit that isn't like a backpacker outfit necessarily but yeah it was nice to have at least one like dressy outfit right i think my last little outfit i've got is one that i bought in bali from the market stall so i got one of these white crochet sets so this is the skirt and then this is the little top that goes with it as well i know such a stereotypical bali girl outfit but i loved it and i was like i can't not be in bali and buy one of these sets so i took with me one pair of pajamas these are the bottoms and the top because i don't wear pajamas that often but they're 
then when I went into hostels, I was like, I need more pyjamas to wear. I had one t-shirt that I took with me, which I wore when I was flying out there. This was just my Casa de Papel t-shirt. It's from Primark or Money Heist. You might know it by that name. But it was so nice to have one t-shirt with me because although the majority of the time I was in crop tops and bikinis, it was nice sometimes to have a t-shirt to wear like in bed at hostels or on travel days. So I definitely recommend taking at least one t-shirt. And then I did actually buy another t-shirt from one of the market stalls. This is so funny because I'm from Manchester and I got this Oasis t-shirt shirt I was like of all the places that I see an Oasis t-shirt I saw it in Thailand but I really liked it black and white and then it's colour on the front it cost me like four pound but again I really liked having the option to wear a t-shirt if I didn't always want to be wearing crop tops in terms of jackets I didn't have any jackets or any coats with me besides my raincoat which I'll show you in a second the only thing I had is this hoodie it's actually inside out right now but <laughs> it's a really lightweight brown hoodie from Primark. The only reason I took this was because I was wearing it when I flew out there, obviously because I came from somewhere that was cold. But to be fair, something like this would be ideal because although it's a hoodie, I don't know if you can see, but it's a really, really lightweight one. It wasn't too bad really for packing it away. And sometimes it was nice to have a jacket to wear because otherwise I didn't really have anything. One other bag that I took with me was this one. This one was like my medical bag, if you can call it that. So originally in this, you'll know if you watch my packing video, I had all my tablets, different treatments and stuff like that. Anything that I thought I would need was in here. And to be honest, it's pretty much empty compared to how it was when I went. Like there's a few little bits still in there which I've not used, but the majority of it I did actually use. And then the only other bag that I took with me, I can't see where it's gone now, but my little makeup bag, I don't know where it is, but it was a very small makeup bag. It only had like one concealer, one mascara, a lipstick, very very basic, did not wear makeup hardly while I was there. So the final bag, looking a bit worse for wear, but this was my liquids bag. So I still, even after four months, don't know a better way to pack my liquids for traveling. So I had quite a lot of bottles and products and I just found that this bag never got smaller. Like it doesn't look that big, but trying to like fit this into my backpack was just a nightmare sometimes so first one i had my fake tan make fun of me if you want for taking fake tan but that is an essential thing for me i don't tan at all i only burn the only time i don't burn as bad is when i've got fake tan on and i feel like a million times more confident when i've got fake tan on so yeah that's an essential for me i've got to work out how to take fake tan with me next time because i'm going hand luggage only i don't know how that's going to work with the 100 ml liquids thing but anyway and then i just had loads and loads of bottles in here like i had my bottles of mosquito repellent got like my aloe vera gel just loads of random products like that which i couldn't get rid of because i actually needed to take them so final couple of things in my backpack these are actually probably my top two things and i've saved them till the end so in the first side pocket i've got my raincoat one of these pack a mac waterproof raincoats cannot recommend it enough not just for southeast asia but i think for anywhere it's really useful but with southeast asia it is obviously a tropical climate sometimes you do have rain and when it rains it rains like it's like a monsoon so it was so so helpful having this waterproof jacket and obviously i love that it packs up so small as well this one is a peter storm one i got it from go outdoors and then my second top recommendation is in my other side pocket and this is my travel towel so believe it or not this tiny little parcel is my towel that i took with me while traveling this one again i got from go outdoors and i'll show you how easily it packs away if you've never heard of travel towels before they're basically like a microfiber material so they're really really lightweight they're so so fast drying literally dries within a couple of minutes and they pack up very very easily as well and guys look how big it is as well does not look like it came out of that small 
package one of my last little recommendations is that you get some kind of luggage tag because a lot of people are backpacking in these destinations a lot of people have the same backpacks as well so it's really important to be able to find which backpack is yours when you're taking ferries or buses or planes and then in terms of bags i literally only had one bag with me and this was my bum bag so weird seeing this now because i would never ever wear this out and about in my Manchester but I use this every single day for the four months that I was traveling cannot recommend something like this enough it is the perfect kind of bag for backpacking I actually got this from H&M in the men's section if you're ever looking in shops and you can't see any go to the men's department because they always seem to have them in there obviously they're not the most fashionable but the majority of backpackers have them and no one cares what kind of outfit you're wearing anyway this one in particular is great because it's got a ton of different pockets and then the only other bag that i had with me was this one so this was my day backpack it's still quite big but i needed this to put my laptop in i took my laptop with me and i didn't want to put it into my big backpack probably wouldn't have fit anyway but i would not chance it getting broken in there i didn't really use it that much out and about but if you were going i don't know say hiking or something then a day pack might be you useful for that if you've got quite a lot of stuff to take. A few people asked me about traveling with a laptop. Personally I was completely fine with it but I am very very protective of mine and very cautious of it. I don't like to leave it in unknown places. I always had it locked up. The only reason I took it was because I needed it for editing my videos but I think if you don't need it for any work then you don't need to take one and it's not essential. So I think that's pretty much everything. That is my backpack unpacked. I hope you guys found this helpful and i hope it helps you in planning for your backpacking trip if you guys did find it helpful please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a little comment below letting me know your travel plans if any of you are going backpacking i am going backpacking again quite soon so i'll tell you more about that in the near future but let me know in the comments what your travel plans are don't forget to check out my other southeast asia videos and my travel instagram and tiktok to follow along with this trip a little bit more thank you guys for watching and i will see you all in a video soon. Bye!